Hello, whiskey folk. I think that one day I'm going to look back on this video, on this thing that I'm doing right now, and wonder what the hell <laughs> I was thinking about. I had this idea a few months back that, that one day, uh, and during summertime perhaps, that I could do some kind of hybrid thing where I could take the V-Pub and move it outside <laughs> next to the recycling bin and do a kind of hybrid recycled review live and do a v-pub and hang out with you guys at the same time now that seemed like a great idea at the time i kind of thought it through in my head the practicalities of setting this up in a scottish summer is virtually uh it's not impossible let's say but it's been extremely extremely challenging i've got much less real estate out here i've got <laughs> Um, covering things up in case of rainfall. The wind's been blowing hard in this direction, so if you see the camera shaking things, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. Tell me you can hear me okay. Um, tell me that the audio is good. <laughs> um, yes, so I had this idea and I've kind of left it till the last possible moment to try and pull it off because, of course, this is the last VPUB before the summer break. I always take a break in summer, eh, June, July and August. So there's going to be a few weeks of no VPUB. So I had to try and do it tonight and hopefully the weather will be kind to us. Eh, just audio is good. Okay, Whiskey Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. I'm going to take you through. Just anybody that's dropping in thinking this is a regular recycled review, um, probably you've worked it out by now, but it's not a regular recycled review. The regular recycled review, the bottles are up here. They're probably just out of shot or just in shot here. That's the recycled review up there. And that's the bottles that have been selected for that. And they've been there for quite a while. Um, you'll see why I've not got around to shooting it yet because um, let's say there's generous heels left in some of these. Uh, and I'll talk a wee bit that, about that later. This live recycled review, I've still got 15 bottles and I've got the basket down here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you bottles that perhaps I've talked about before in recycled reviews. Okay, so there'll be repeat bottles, maybe there'll be independent bottles, maybe there'll be something that's a bit different that doesn't fit in the remit of a traditional recycled review. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to go through five bottles, then five, then five, and I've kind of split them up in the basket here. And while I go, rather than kind of sample off the heels like I usually do, or like I've done in the past, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wee infinity bottle. I've got an empty bottle here, all ready to go, and uh, <laughs> we'll make a wee infinity bottle. And uh, the bottles that I've chosen here, a couple of them at least, I've specifically chosen to share in this uh, live VPUB uh, tonight in order to give the infinity bottle a chance, make a decent effort and not just kind of throwing lots of random tails and heels in there. Let's jump into the lounge and see if you guys are doing okay and making sure that you can hear me. I'm just going to make it a wee bit bigger and give myself a chance to be able to read you. There's inevitably going to be something that goes haywire or wrong tonight. Um, my plan B is just to put up a hold screen 
and run inside if the wind uh, comes or the rain comes uh, or if anything else happens for that matter. Bear with me. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. If you're trying to get my attention, see, uh, as you've been doing, you've been writing Aquaviti or at Aquaviti, and I can see it. Whiskey Jason, audio is good. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicholas Butt is here. Uh, here you're just fine. Excellent, Nicholas. Thanks so much. Des, sounds good to me. Stewie Baby, loud and clear. All fine, says Graham Fraser. Whiskey and Office is saying, looks and sounds great, mate. Even everyone, I'm looking okay. Can you see me? I've got lights here. Um, uh -huh. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> um, Eric Cunliffe is saying we can hear you loud and clear, Captain. Good to see you, Eric. Tabitha Adams, Che Francis, Willie Dolier, Wheels. Wheels, I think I know who that is. Is that Brandon? I think I met you in uh, Texas, Brandon. I hope you're very well. Nice to welcome you here. Gavin, Alan McLaughlin, uh, Hellswood, Pete Head, Greg's Whiskey Guide, Carl Van Wallingham, Barton Holling. Uh, Sedegiv, uh, saying all is good. Thank you, my friend Peter Wilcox. A uh, Kilted Moose, Scott. So nice to see you in, Scott. Rico is here. Fantastic, Rico. I've got a message from you. I've not had a chance to digest it yet. It was coming. It came in as I was uh, as I was setting up tonight. So it's going to be a bunch of messages and things on my phone that I'm not really sure about. Let's see if there's anything important from my friend Rico. Uh, I think I've got a sample here that I'm keen, very keen to try. Uh, that's uh, that's from you, Rico. I think this is from you. Unless my memory is failing me, I think this is from Rico. This is a Flora and Fauna Glen Elgin, 12-year-old. And this was a buy-in. We all kind of chipped in a little bit to divide this bottle up amongst as many people as, as possible. Why for a Glen Elgin 12-year-old? Well, I can't imagine there's anything particularly special about it other than the fact that this is a flora and fauna Glen Elgin, um, and that's long since been discontinued. This was bottled in 2000, so it's been in glass for 20 years, and we get the chance to try a wee sample of this tonight. I think that was down to Rico. It'll be coming in. Rico's saying this V-Pub is a piece of, piece of history right away. Let's make it good history, please. The wind is blowing quite hard, I hope. Uh, it keeps me um, it keeps me safe. Uh, whiskey mystery fell is in saying it's like Rab C Nez, but whiskey reviews. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it, Phil. Absolutely. Um, uh, my wife just had a my wife and I just had a chat in the kitchen, and I said to her, I was looking out, and I said, I I really don't know why, <laughs> what I think I'm doing here. Why have I done this? And she said, I I don't know. I really don't know. But when I suggested this months ago, when I had this idea, I was sitting on the couch and I said, what about a recycled review live outside from the bin during summertime? And she said, that's a great idea. <laughs> well, obviously she saw how stressed I was trying to get everything to work. But she suddenly decided that maybe it wasn't that great an idea after all. I'm gonna keep a wee bit of this Glen Elgin aside. There's a couple other things to talk about tonight as well, but we'll get onto that a wee bit later. There's no game of is it a space side tonight uh, as I've promised time and time again I still haven't set it up yet I'm going to set up a wee spreadsheet so that anybody that wants to play that game after the summer break when we're back to normal again uh, they can put their name in and hopefully lock out a spot that they're going to be available and then on the run up I don't need to worry about uh, syncing up with people and email and messaging and things like that it should be a wee bit more automated that's my idea anyway let's see if it happens Reb Mordecai is here good to see you Reb Stephen Aldridge is here wonderful Stephen good to see you um Belfast Whiskey Club is that Paul fantastic Paul's the guy who's been uh, who's in charge of running uh with his uh with his teammates of course for the Belfast uh Whiskey Festival I've been talking about that in recent VPUBs um Eventbrite and the Facebook page, I think, is where you want to hook up with those guys. I don't know what's left. I haven't looked in the last few days. I don't know what tastings are still available to buy. Maybe Paul can chime in. Paul, if you want to drop a link in here, eh, my admins will be happy to clear the link for you, my friend, so that people can have a look eh, if, at any tastings that still remain. It's going to keep you busy to, throughout the end of July, and it's a fantastic festival. A lot of work's gone into that there, and I wish Paul and the team all the very best with it. Somebody's bought away a wee dram. It looks like, um, eh, oops, the chat just jumped there. It looks like my friend Royal431. Even in Roy, what I wouldn't give eh, to be a fly on the wall when you bump into the neighbours tomorrow. <laughs> None of them spotted me yet, Grant. Thank you so much for leaving your name. 
I managed to uh, do a wee bit of investigative work uh, recently and I managed to track down that you were indeed Grant because I've not been picking up your name recently. Thank you very much for your virtual uh, drama, friend. Thank you. Cheers. This feels very bizarre. Give me some time to feel um, comfortable and adjust to it a wee bit. Sakin is in saying the weather is the reason. I've never been to Scotland. Plus, when you live in London, if the tube don't go there, we ain't going. <laughs> um, I have to say, the weather in Scotland, I talk about this quite a lot. It's not that it's particularly bad, as in it's not ever an extreme, really, but it's just super changeable. Um, and I'm rarely brilliant, rarely great. Ben Marnock is in. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Ronnie. Same. Got the T-shirt here in England. This, the recycled T-shirt, fantastic. Scogsmar, the same. Graham Horner, I second that. Uh, it was Lynn's fault, Whiskey Novice, Jim is saying. Um, uh, yeah, it was her encouragement originally, let's say. Lindsay Holman is saying, playing it, is it a space side with myself tonight? I have to say, Lindsay Holman came out with a, an absolutely cracking, um, let's say, uh, route to victory on... Uh, on is it, uh, on the quiz, sorry, the quiz at the end. I do have a quiz at the end tonight. That's that's locked in. Uh, if if the weather gets too bad here, I'll maybe need to run inside to try and do it. Uh, but there is a quiz at the end, and I would love to be able to stay out here uh, until then to do it. Um, let's see if I can pick up uh, Lindsay's comment because I thought it was particularly funny. Um, Anybody that's watching on Facebook, by the way, I don't pick up the Facebook comments. It's harder for me to see. Most of the chat and the interaction is inside YouTube. I need to try and fathom a better way to manage that, to have uh, both chats up uh, in the future. Um, I, it's maybe in the Barflies group. We've also got uh, the Aquavite Barflies Facebook page as well, as well as the Water of Life page. Um, if you want to join that, just search Facebook for Aquavite Barflies and you can keep up to date with things that are happening uh, over the summer, over the summer break as well. I can't find it right now, but in the Aquavite Barflies page, you'll find uh, Lindsay's cheat sheet, how to get a pass mark in the quiz at the end. I thought it was particularly funny. I thought it was a great laugh. And on top of Stuart is here saying, behind you, <laughs> what do I have? Is there a cat or something? Uh, we do have the cats roaming about, so they're probably going to appear. And Helen is saying, loving what you've done with the office. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and that cat took an Ardbeg 10 bottle. That cat, I think, that was walking around is Brora. You might remember that she is the cat that you guys helped to name. That wee cat, that wee kind of calico tortoiseshell cat is Brora. Greg is saying, if it's more comfortable for you to read our messages in capitals, Roy, um, it's it's okay, Greg, they look like I'm leaning tonight. It's just the screen is a wee bit out of reach. Um, <laughs> McCallum Fenner is saying, video bomb. Let me tell you what I've got in the glass, and we'll start the first five bottles of this recycled review. But what I should really have done is had, have, is had the wee tune, the wee music up. What do we think about that? Um, I don't know. I think it may get a wee bit annoying and just get in the way of the... Oh, in the way of the audio. What do you think? Probably you can barely hear it anyway. Anyway, I've got this... Uh, it's one of my favourite um, drams to start a flight, honestly. Unfortunately, this isn't in a recycled review because this is difficult to get now. In fact, it's, it's, it's uh, discontinued. This is Glen Burgie 10 uh, from Gordon and McPhail. This was actually a recommendation to me a few years ago by Roddy, Roddy Graham. Um, it's a 40% ABV, but it's a nice, easy drinking, subtle wee dram. You can see I've only got a wee dribble left in it, and I'm not even going to put this into the infinity bottle. I'm just going to finish it off. I'll maybe give, just for celebration's sake, I'll give the infinity bottle that I'm going to make tonight just a wee drop of the Glenburgie 10. I have to say, I will miss this. 
I think this is a notch above the Glenfiddich tens. Sorry, the Glenfiddich twelves, the Glenmorangie tens, and things like that. I think this is um, it's a starter whiskey. It's light. It's obviously forty percent. It will be chill filtered, but honestly, I think this is a decent wee ten year old dram, and uh, I kind of wish we still had it around. I'd give it a seven and a half out of ten. Bye bye, Glenburgie. And the difference here, of course, is that I'm able to actually have a dram as I throw it in the bin. It's very light. Glen Burgie's a light spirit anyway. The 10 years old and 40% is super light. There's not really much to talk about. It's almost just like a whiskey flavour to start to start your flight or whatever. Or if you're just going to have um, a whiskey flavour in a mixer or the bottom of a cocktail or something like that, this is perfect for that. Like I say, it's a wee bit better than its stable mates, I think. Unfortunately, uh, you're not going to be able to get your hands on it now. Jean de la Cuisine has bought me a wee dram to say, great to be back in the V Pub Roy. I've missed a few uh, due to unfortunate family circumstances. I'm sorry to hear that, Jean. I hope uh, I hope everything's okay now. Uh, but I watched them all on the replay. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Cheers, Jean. Thank you for your uh, your wonderful virtual dram. Let's move on to the next one. It's another indie. Again, you can see why I wouldn't put this in a regular recycled review because it's going to be difficult for people to get a hold of these kind of things, especially when they're maybe single cask or small batch type thing. But this is a, you don't see the photos. Let's see if I can pull this up. So you can actually see this. This is a Hepburn's Choice independent bottler. This is a seven year old Kalila. But look at this wee thing written here. It says quarter cask. Heated whiskey can be really, really good, really enjoyable when it's young. Absolutely. This was, I think the quarter casks helped it a lot because despite being seven years old, this was quite a rich, chewy Kalila. I enjoyed this a lot. Um, it's presented not bad, 46%. Uh, we believe it to be unchill filtered, natural color, as you would expect from an indie. Um, and I thought this was a decent Kalila. I paid maybe 30 for 32 pounds, some, somewhere in the order of 30 pounds. Fantastic stuff for that value and a nice PT hit from a quarter cask. This is probably seven and a half to eight out of 10. And if I could get this again at that price, this would be a good wee Kalila to have. <coughs> I wonder what's happened to the audio when I smash those bottles in there. I should be reading the comments to see if uh, if this music is off-putting. Uh, said again, if seen hearing the recycled music again brings a tear to my eye. Don't worry, my friend. I've got one here, and it, we will end up. Uh, uh, you will end up with a summertime recycled review. It's well overdue, but I think you're going to pick up one of the reasons why it's so overdue because. I'm having to go through, I'm, I'm going to go through 30 bottles tonight. Um, so th just think about how long it takes you to get through 30 bottles. And it, if each recycled review is going to remain at 15 bottles, that's kind of why it's taken so long. And also, the majority of the bottles that I'm investing in right now tend to be a wee bit niche. They're more kind of, they're, they're cast strength, they're independent bottles, they are... Um, maybe limited release or something like that, that's difficult for most folk to get their hands on. So again, you know, the more freely available or widely distributed stuff, that's the kind of stuff that you want to share in a recycled review. The things that everybody can get their, excuse me, everything everybody can get their hands on. So again, it's another reason that the time in between, I'm making excuses now, of course, right? The time in between each recycled review is taken a wee bit longer. Um, I okay try and keep up with this chat
to me personally, it's off putting the music. Ah, okay, so it's off putting a wee bit. See, I can't, I can't really hear. Whiskey and obviously saying it's great crack, Roy. Keep it up, Stu, baby. Saying your neighbours are going to love you. Smashing all those bottles after 10 pm. I know. Mm. I never thought about that. Try and smash them a wee bit quieter. Um, Stu, uh, Mikey here saying, James Hope was wondering if Scott's parody might come true tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, because I'm genuinely drinking on a recycled review, whereas, whereas normally I don't. But Scott's par parody was all about drinking, of course. Molasses is saying, the music is mandatory for a recycled review. Uh, so in order to kind of help people, I'll try and just put it a wee squeak or two lower. Uh, Nathan Dekinga is here as well, saying, I volunteer as a tribute uh, to, to, to help you drink it all. You know we are all available for that. You know, it's another thing that slowed it down. Lockdown. So all the people that used to genuinely come to the house and I used to force whiskey on them and others would have been happy to just tuck into whatever was available or getting poured for them. That's not happening right now. The lockdown has really slowed down the whiskey consumption. So all of these things are compacting things, which is why actually with these bottles tonight, you'll see that I'm taking the heels out of them to make this wee uh, infinity bottle. Hoyt has bought me a drama saying, hey, good to revisit the Roy Recycling Centre. Here's to a great, great rest of your summer. Hope you and the good doctor get to travel some. Well, we're going up to see uh, the Whiskey Rev for a couple of days, him and his family. We're, two families are getting together in the Highlands, uh, up in Speyside uh, sometime next week. And hopefully we'll get a couple of days of downtime, but there's no plans for us to travel as of yet. Hoyt, thank you so much for your virtual drama, friend. Always a pleasure to have you in. Cheers, Hoyt. Keep me a wee bit warmer, finishing off that Glen Burgie. Donald Passwissi is saying, uh, those seem to be the kind of bottles I am attracted to now in these cast strength first fill sherry casks. We, we tend to kind of go down, I mean, because of the channel and, and just because of my attitude towards whiskey generally, I try to keep uh, as, as, as open a mind as I can possibly uh, keep. Uh, as, as broad a spectrum as I can, you know, world whiskies, uh, Irish whiskies, American whiskies, um, all sorts of Scotch whiskies. I'm trying to try everything, but it's difficult. <laughs> You're only one person. You only have one liver. Um, and, you know, drunk is never a good look. It doesn't feel very good, especially the next day. Not to me, at least. So it's, it's harder, honestly. Um, but it's fun. Everyone has to look up Scotch Test Dummies Recycled Review. Hilarious. I have often talked about it. I've often plugged it. I think it's one of my all-time favourite uh, YouTube whiskey videos, honestly speaking. I think it's great fun. The burps that Scott pulls uh, off in that video are uh, earth-shattering scale. Um, and, but the whole thing's really quite funny. And he did that parody probably back when there was maybe only two or three uh, recycled reviews out. There really weren't many. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you very much for your virtual dram. I'm going to hold up this wee glass of uh, Glenn uh, Elgin, Flora and Fauna, to say thank you. Cheers. Oh, okay. <clears throat> there's, there's a. I could tell that this was from an old bottle. This old bottle effect here, it's light, it's mild, but there's that flavour that happens uh, when whiskey's in glass for a long time, especially, uh -huh. especially when it's quite low ABV, I think. I think that this is still a nice, sweet, easy whiskey. I feel like there's a wee, a wee bit of sherry in this. It's richer than I expected. Somebody else has bought me a wee dram as well. It looks like uh, Bud Jenkins has bought me a dram, Bud, you star. He's saying, I already support you. So spend this on a dram for Lynn during your holiday. You're a blessing to us all. So enjoy your time with your family. Uh, we will be here. Bud, how can you say that? You are a blessing to me, honestly. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, I'll make a wee promise to you. I will buy Lynn a wee drink, if she'll take one. And I'll say, this is from Bud Jenkins. Cheers, Bud. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Quite light, not a lot of um, not a lot of body. Quite light of body as well. 
definitely like a wee lick of sherry. It's richer than I imagined it was going to be. Have we worked out if, if this is from Rico? I think this is Rico's project. And Sellit Bang has bought me a dram as well, saying, here's to your summer break. It's been a great season. Rest easy. Looking forward uh, to the break myself. Uh, Sellit Bang, thank you very much for your drama, friend. Cheers to you. I was genuinely going to make the last recycled review before the summer break a kind of retrospective thing, bring in some folk, some other YouTubers, have a kind of wee mini kind of celebration and things. But we already do that at the end of the year to celebrate the, the, the preceding year. So I think it's worked out okay. If we can get away with this, if this weather lets me get through this VPUB tonight and do these, this recycling, um, I think we'll be fine. I think it's going to be. Uh, Hopefully okay. And Barton is saying that video spoof from the dummies is one of my favourites. Still leaves me laughing uncontrollably. Uh, uh, imitation equals flattery. Yeah, I mean, S Scott told me up front that he was doing that. Um, I sent him the music and things for it so that he could uh, put the recycled review uh, uh, back and track and things on it. Um, and when when I watched that for the first time, it was it was beyond hysterical to me. I just couldn't believe that 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 somebody would go to that length of comedy over whiskey and all in, in the spirit of collaboration and things as well. It's it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And Scott is a bit of an actor. If nobody has seen it, and um, if anybody wants to drop the link for that video in here so people can copy and paste it, uh, you'll be welcome to do that. Um, it's a wonderful video. Uh, and uh, it's Scott Bruno at his finest, at his best. Enrico is saying yes, uh, that I remember cor correctly for a change uh, that the Glen Elgin is uh, his project, his uh, bottle split. Okay, I need to keep an eye on this battery this evening. Let's have another wee go at another bottle. Okay, there's a lot going into the infinity bottle here. And this has got a lot to do with the fact that I don't um, particularly get on with this. This is a Bin Romac. Let me see, pull up the camera, make sure that you can see this. This has been Romac from a time when it wasn't quite as good as it is now. I think I bought this potentially in 2010. I might have had this bottle for 10 years and I've still got quite a bit left. Let's have a wee check to make sure that it's not gone flat, that make sure it's still okay. Just pour a tiny sip. I never loved this. It was very spirity. Um, this was a 40% non-age statement, but no, Mike, this is their supermarket fodder, honestly. You don't see this anymore. They don't make this anymore. Ah. Ten years in the bottle has actually done it a favour or two. It's actually tasting okay tonight. But it's very spirity, malty. Clearly quite young, but it's not as bad as I remember it. Let's get it in the Infinity bottle. This is going to be, this has been Romac, quite a generous amount of been Romac. <laughs> Hope we've got enough space for everything else I'm going to try and fit into this Infinity bottle. Um, but this is going to be a base. This is going to be our kind of filler, if you like. So this is going to be our, maybe like, almost like our green whiskey. This Ben Romac has long since been discontinued. Um, ben Romac do fantastic things now. Their 10 year old is amazing. Uh, their higher proof stuff, amazing. Their age stuff, amazing. Ben Romac get better and better. Unfortunately, this one only gets a six and a half out of 10. Also got another indie here. This is the first of, uh, I think I've got five indies in here. Uh, this is another seven-year-old, so like the Kalila that I just threw away. This is another very young, independent bottling. And this is indicative of the fact that um, I think it's harder for independent bottlers to get a hold of really mature, good value stuff this weather uh, these days. I think it's um, you're going to see a lot more, or you, we have seen a lot more kind of five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-old age statement independent bottlings out there. It's definitely a try before you buy, but please don't be put off. I've got a seven-year-old Mortlach in there that's stunning. I've got a four-year-old Glengarry. 
a four-year-old Ben Nevis that are amazing at four years old. And when they've got the confidence to put the age statement on there, yes, maybe there's a, there's a suspicion that they're bottling just what they have, but they can't trash the brand that they've been building over the years. It still has to be good. So like I say, it is a try before you buy, but don't discount it just because it's got a young single digit age statement on it. I would say this one, I would, uh, this is a thrusk, okay? This is a, a 2011 bottle, 2019 a thrusk. A thrusk is a damn good spirit anyway. So as long as the, the cask has been okay, uh, don't care about the single digit age statements. And if, if the price is good, of course, again, I think this was in the order of 35 pounds going from memory, I'm not very sure. But this is an eight, 10, eight and a half, honestly, out of 10. I loved this wee dram. <coughs> and finally, ending the first five bottles is another indie. It's left a wee bit in here to put in the infinity bottle. I bought two of these. Uh, this is a boutique whiskey company. I keep needing to bring up this camera to make sure you can see. This is a boutique whiskey company. And if you're familiar with this label, label you'll know right away. This is the label they put on their batches of Dilluan. Uh, this is at 47.5%. It's a 15-year-old Dilluan. And while it doesn't taste 15 years old, honestly, it tastes younger than that, I love this. This is right up my street. This is exactly the style of whiskey that I reach for more than half the time. It's been in a bourbon cask. It's been left alone for a while. It's made it into teenage years and it's rounded out quite nice. This is a very, very subtle dram. There's not a lot of activity in this. There's not a lot going on. You might remember when Charlie McLean was on the channel, he sipped this alongside a Klein Leash, and he said that this has been a quiet cask. He thought that this was quite dull and uninteresting. Well, as far be it for me to disagree with the, the great Charlie McLean. The guy is awesome. But everything is subjective, and I honestly still very much love this we Bill Ewan. I've got another bottle in there as well. This is an 8, 10, 8.5 out of 10, and I'm glad I've got back up of it. Let's, uh, oops, quite dry. So our Infinity bottle is coming along quite nicely. This is just me playing here. Perfect timing, just as the song dies out. I don't even know if you guys can hear this. Now, I'm, I'm quite blown out. I've got a lot of uh, shadows and things. Obviously, unless I'd set up last night, I couldn't have allowed for that. Uh, let's see if we can, if we switch off one of them. Which one is causing the shadow? Um, what will happen if I switch it off? I think it looks no better, no worse, right? We'll just leave it on and that's about as dim as I can make it go. So this is the light. This is what we're dealing with tonight. I'll jump in the chat and make sure you guys are okay. Tim is saying, hi, Roy, is there a way you can turn the camera around and show us the setup you have out there? Uh, no, not easy because it's on a boom arm. It's locked and if I move it, I'm going to screw up something else. But I did take a photo. So what I'll do, Tim, is I'll drop it into Patreon and you'll see the setup. I'm sitting at a an outdoor table, I've got a parasol above my head, I've backed up the car so that I could lift the tailgate of the car and put one of the lights in the car in case the rain came down. The other light under the parasol uh, and the covering, um, you know, all the electronics and things. Uh, so I'll put a wee picture inside Patreon and <laughs> you'll see uh, the mess that I've got out here. Graham Horner is saying, came across an 11 year old Deanston Sherry casket, cask strength. Oops, chat's jumped. What has happened? Here you are. Sorry, Graham. Came across an 11 year old Deanston Sherry cast at cast strength from 2008 from Signature Vintage for £80. Now, that 11 year old one, is that the one that's up in the high 60s ABV as well? Um, I have to say, tried a couple of recent uh, Deanstons, and you're doing the right thing. You're buying Deanstons from the modern era in the last 15 or 18 years. Um, if it's distilled during that time, you've got a much higher chance of getting a really good Deanston, honestly. Um, I would suggest that it's risky still, but it, it's not tried before before you buy. Uh, I bought a couple of Cadenheads Deanstons recently, um, cast strength, both of them, blind, I didn't try them and I'm enjoying them. I'm getting through them absolutely fine. 
um, I think it's a good spirit and normally from decent casks as well. Now, from signatory vintage, from Caden heads, from producers like that, from bottlers like that, you're going to get a good experience, I think. Rule Orange Rule is saying uh, bin sounds quite full. <laughs> it is absolutely full. It's brimming full during lockdown. They weren't emptying it. So it is pretty full. Um, Jim is saying, I take it you've got the car alarm sorted. No, it's sorted now, uh, but this car that's backed up here is a courtesy car. I'm going to be picking up our car tomorrow. Um, Lee J is saying, Roy, really appreciate all you do, especially our efforts tonight. You're a star. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I know how many people are going to be laughing at me. Like I said at the, at the start of the uh, tonight, I'm a wee bit nervous of looking back on this and wondering, you know, at some point in the future, what the hell have it, was I thinking about? Somebody's bought me a wee dram. Let's catch up with that. See who that was. It looks like Jimmy Legs icon. Is it? Is it Blair? Blair it is. I don't know if you've seen Roy's neighbours' houses, but they're quite fancy. I wonder how they get along uh, after tonight. I I'm blessed, Jimmy, with fantastic neighbours. This is Charlie and Ethel um, uh, on my right-hand side here. They're wonderful people, really, really lovely, elegant people. Uh, on my left-hand side, Moira and John, who've lived in this side of Glasgow all their life, uh, brought their family here as well. Um, I'm blessed with wonderful neighbours. Slightly nervous that they don't feel the same way <laughs> about me. <laughs> Whiskey Novice is saying, I take it you get the car alarm. Sorry, Jim, I got that one. Thank you. Peter Wilcox, studio building, love it. Uh, Graham Horner saying it. Yes, it's at 66.6. .6, so that's uh, Seve and I, the bottle chasers in Glasgow. That's Kilted Moose as well. We call that, we refer to that one as the Devil's Deanston. Right, Al 41. So hopefully it doesn't rain with the car door open. I think you could do it with a, 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 without a repeat of that situation. If it does rain, if it starts to come down, listen, I'm just going to put a hold screen up. I'll be between no quicker than five minutes, but no longer than 10. I'll be able to shut this down, get all the sensitive electronics inside and uh, go live again um, from inside. Might be a wee bit hectic, a wee bit manic, but I should be able to get there. <laughs> um, Lindsay Holman is saying, as they say, if you don't know one, uh, if you don't know one, it is you. Uh, sorry, Lindsay, I've not picked up on the floor there. and I, I know that I'm not uh, picking up. Um, let me know what you're speaking about. Talking about my neighbours, perhaps. Peter Wilcox is saying, not laughing at you, more like laughing and sipping with you, you star. No, Peter, thank you very much. I completely understand. Daniel Gray is saying, ever thought about doing an MTV Cribs style tour of your home? Lol. Eh, no, not really. Not really. I don't fancy that at all. Eh, not least because it's, it's eh, there's only one wee corner of my house and the whiskey cabinet in the dining room that's whiskey themed. I've got the studio and I've got the dining room, the dining table there. The rest of the house is just a big lived-in family space. It's always manic. Chris Moore is saying, can't remember if I said hi, hi. Chris, good to have you in, my friend. Just caught a spit of rain. Damn it. Stay away, rain, please, just for another hour or so. Lindsay Holman is saying, in, in regards to bad neighbours, ah, okay. Uh, I don't... I think that we have all very good neighbours who look out for each other. Uh, most people that have been here, my wife's been in this part of Glasgow all her life and she knows most of the folk in this street um, and they all kind of look out for each other. We have good neighbours here. Multi Mission is saying, they might be a little less nice neighbours now you're shining a 100 watt spot straight into the living room. Hopefully they don't see it. Hopefully nobody is looking over here and wondering what the hell is going on. They have seen me film and recycled reviews in the past. Yes, and it is uh, a bit bizarre. Daniel Gray. Uh, saying fair enough, I was just being silly. No problem, Daniel, don't worry about it at all. So what have I got in here? This is the Glen Elgin. I've also got another two B samples here I want to share with you. I don't know if it's going to be appropriate to try these tonight because I want to sit, really sit down and, and concentrate on these. We have uh, two samples here from my friend, Connor Strang, who's now working for a cask broker. And Connor and I have been chatting for some time about possibly doing some kind of crowdsourced or, or community sourced um, bottling. Uh, there was a, uh, a discussion started in Aquavite Barflies chat uh, at the pushing and the instigation of Jonathan Flowers and Seraj as well. Uh, those two guys were talking about it and it picked up a lot of excitement, honestly. But I kind of would be more interested in not cask buying 
not a not a young cask, a, f a freshly filled cask that we've got to wait on, and all the administration and the time that we've got to wait. I've always been much more keen to kind of look at something that would be a, a mature cask, buy a mature cask that I can try, one that I love, one that I really enjoy, one that I would be proud to kind of put the community name on, the Aquavita name on. Um, so I'm trusting Connor. Connor has found two really interesting drams here. Uh, I've only taken a wee tiny sip out of these bottles so far. I'm going to take the rest of them, take my time with them and sit down and consider them. Uh, one is a Glen, Lo Glen Lossy, the cast strength 59.2%, a 2007 Glen Lossy. And one is a Macduff. Macduff, obviously, I'm, I'm keen to... Um, that would be quite fun if, if the first ever Aquavite uh, bottling was a Macduff. <laughs> Um, so we've, I've got to sort out a few things. I've got to sort out fulfilment. I've got to sort out uh, keeping it legal and all of that kind of thing. Um, it will be the type of thing that's released to the community, the Patreon community first, then into the Aquavita Barflies group. So if you're not a member of that page, uh, make sure you join there and uh, keep your eyes in the future. If it's something that Connor's trying, Connor has been a barfly from the very beginning of this channel. Um, he's a friend. I've met him a couple of times. He opened a bottle of Brora to share with me. Wonderful, wonderful man. He's given me lots of amazing whiskies over the years. But he's also a distiller. Um, and he has a fantastic knowledge and a fantastic palate. I used to refer to him as my uh, A student. He regularly got 10 out of 10 in the quizzes. He's just one of those really impassioned guys, member of the London Whiskey Club as well. Now in the cask broker trade, um, and he reached out to me to say, Roy, if you're interested, uh, I'll try to find you a good bottle. So, exciting stuff. Cheers, Roy. Need more Dalyuan. I absolutely. And uh, Roy Alice saying, don't you mean a McDoff? We should call it a McDoff, perhaps. Jamie Brown is saying, really excited about the Aquavita cask, but completely understand the need to do it right. Aye, it's not going to be a thing to make money. It's going to be like, like really something that I think is good, that everybody's going to have a nice shared experience and enjoy a nice cask together. Um, if Connor likes it, if it ends up being something that I like and Connor likes, then it's going to be something that, that I would be keen uh, to try and realise. But it has to be above board. So it might not be something that's done very, very quickly. Jimmy, like I said, you've had the PC10, I assume, heavily peated. I, I think not. Uh, Port Charlotte 10, it, it is actually heavily peated. But the way the, with the, way, the way the peat plays with your palate, the way it, that it communicates with you, honestly, it's like Octomores. Yeah. To me, an Arbeg comes across more heavily peated than Octomores. And I think it's similar, Jimmy, with a lot of the Port Charlotte releases as well. You don't realise um, that they are heavily peated. Um, and sometimes us as Isla loving or heavily peated style loving enthusiasts, we very often um, end up with a wee bit of kind of, uh, we've adjusted to the peat. We don't taste peat the way we used to. Uh, one, of the, one of the bottles in here in this recycle is Lefroy 10. And I had a drama of Lefroy 10 recently and I thought, wow, this is so quiet. There's virtually no peat in here at all. Ben Marnock is saying, great idea, I'm in. Will it be the Deverin? Well, the Deverin is Macduff's own brand, so no, it, it wouldn't be at all. Um, and Andrew Butler is saying, can you bottle both whiskies? Aye, well, if they both, if they, if they both, if we can't decide between the, it's just down to cost, then it's more expensive, of course. If the Glen Lossy and the, and the Macduff both end up being good, then you never know. I fully expect that we'll sit on this, we, we'll mull it over. Um, I've, I've taken a wee sip out of both of these and I think that uh, they both tasted intriguing, nice. Uh, cast strength as well, it brings a lot of engagement, a lot of play on the palate. The, the, the McDuff is um, a bit lower, it's uh, down at just below 51%, 50.7. Um, but I'm going to spend a bit of time. I don't want to say too much. And then if the, if the release does come out and it ends up being neither of these, you know, you don't want to disappoint people. I probably shouldn't have mentioned. That's fine. As long as you know there's nothing uh, fixed. It's, uh, it's very much still in the ether. We will try and tie it down. Alistair is saying, Alistair Gray, don't sell the Aquavita bottle via Selfridges, please. <laughs> no, don't worry. Uh, Andrew Butler is saying, uh, we 
we got both uh, Wardhead and an Ard more through Reddit. Ah, okay. So Wardhead is from Grants, obviously. Wardhead is uh, Glenfiddich, I think, and they uh, add more. So the add more probably would have been peated. Okay, let's go on with this Infinity Bottle. How are we doing for time? Half past ten. Good stuff. I'm already way beyond uh, the half litre here. Probably put a lot of Binrolac in. I've got a couple of overspill glasses. That'll work out okay. Look at what's happened to the, the lighting now that the darkness has, has fallen upon us. Yeah, it's getting dark about 10, 15 just now in Scotland, so yeah, we're dark. Okay, I'll show you the rest of uh, the bottles. I'm going to try and use this. Would that work? Uh, would you see as I made, if I as I mix these up? Let's try that. Okay, that's good. That's working a wee bit. It's not the greatest of cameras, but you should be able to see it okay. I'm going to make the infinity bottle with what's left of this. Uh, this is a 15-year-old Linkwood. You can see that this is a very, very old Linkwood. There is a barcode on that which suggests it's a 1990s. That's consistent with everything else. Uh, Gordon and McPhail, 15-year-old licensed Linkwood from the 1990s. I've really, really enjoyed this bottle, loved it. However, I've had it so long that this has gone a wee bit flat now. This has become really quite soft. It's still whiskey, but I don't think uh, probably this isn't It's 40% uh, anymore. It was bottled at 40%, dropped down a wee bit from that. Still got some nice flavours and things, but it's become just a wee bit soft. So let's see how we got on by just adding a wee dash of Linkwood into this mix. I think I'm going to get two Infinity bottles out of this. Maybe keep an empty backup bottle just in case. I'm not going to throw this one in the recycling right now, but this is going to end up in the recycling. Uh, I've enjoyed my time with this. I picked this up at auction. I encourage everybody uh, that's able uh, to get their uh, their bottles at auction if they can pick these kind of things up. Um, please explore these old bottlings. It's really good fun. And this was very cheap as well. I don't think I paid even £30 for this at auction. Not a lot of demand for this. Maybe there's a bit more now, um, but it was wonderful stuff. Interestingly, it's a screw top as well, as it was back in the day. I'm going to keep this just in case I need it for uh, if I fill this jug up a bit too much. Daniel Gray saying that infinity bottle is looking great. It's like a big, <laughs> big cup. And uh, the malt cask Yeti is in. Good to see you saying nice upgrade to the studio. It's a one night only thing, Yeti, I promise you. Hoyt is saying it's a uh, whiskey gym, but not as we know it. Aye. And Glenn Duncan is saying, I'm way out of my de depth listening to you. Uh, so many I've never seen, but love it all the same. Thanks for the enlightenment. Glenn, stick with it. Stick with it, my friend, because as, as time goes on, you just happen upon all of these things and you take it all in your stride. This, this is not a race. It's very, it, you just, there's no rush for it all. And uh, Greg is saying, good idea, the two screens. Roy, I hope you can see it okay. Uh, well, let's switch back to the other one. And uh, we can try and pick out another couple of bottles. Look at this. Look at the age on this, 34 years old. This is a Glen Alba. Now this is a single malt whiskey, but this is a supermarket label. Uh, this is from Lidl, the German uh, supermarket. Um, in the UK, this is a 34 year old product, 40% ABV, colored within an inch of its life, absolutely no doubt. But you can see, um, uh, I mean, it is sherry cask and it does taste quite sherry cask. Um, it's a finish, a sherry cask finish, as you can see there. But I paid, believe it or not, I paid for this whiskey £34.99, one pound, just a little over one pound for every year that this is spent in the cask. Um, no, sorry, I said it was a single malt. This is a blend. It's blended scotch. But even the grain whiskey in this has got to be 34 years old or older. So as soon as I tip this into the infinity bottle, it is not malt whiskey anymore. So it switches from being a blended malt to a blended scotch whiskey. And I'm absolutely fine with that. So let's say uh, pull this up to the other camera and you can see how full this is getting. It's getting tricky, tricky full. So I'm gonna to need to pour a wee bit of this off because I want to I want to do something interesting here with this infinity bottle tonight. If you'll notice that everything um, 
Yeah, let's give her Glen Alba a score, shall we? Um, I have to say that uh, I have enjoyed my time with this. It's really nice when somebody comes to the house and you can pour them a 34-year-old whiskey. It, you know, and, and you can talk to them about what, what, what a blend is, what it takes to be 34 years old, that everything in this whiskey is 34 years old. And they can genuinely feel like you're treating them. Um, and I'm not saying you're not treating them, you genuinely are. If this was to come out now, it wouldn't be 34 99 it would be a bit more expensive. But if you can get past the brand snobbery, if you can get past the, the, the idea that uh, you're not very sure what's in this, this is a 34 year old whiskey for 34 and a bit, 35 pounds. Amazing stuff. I would score it seven and a half out of 10. And I think if I saw it on the shelf for that price again, I would absolutely uh, put it back in the cabinet. Great stuff. Let's pour off a wee bit of our infinity here. We're going to need to make some space because I've got a couple of, uh, let's say, liveners. We've got a couple of things here that's really going to... Whoop. It's really going to uh, liven things up quite a bit. We're going to add a bit of ABV and we're going to add a lot of richness. So we, so we need a bit more space to have a bit of fun here. Most of the things that we've been putting in so far is really quite low in ABV. And we're going to try a wee drama this tonight, but it's not going to taste like much. You need to give it time to marry and come together. But we'll give it a wee go and see how we're getting on. Um, but what I'll do is I'll add the first livener, which is this, became a famous bottle by the Scotch Test Dummies, and it is that bottle. This is the Tomatin PX. I think it's 55.5% going from memory. Uh, yep, 55.5. Tomat and PX is that cask as well. It's cask uh, 34867. It's the one that we bought uh, when we actually visited the distillery. And it's the one that won the Scotch Test Dummies uh, shootout. You might remember when they did the sherry shootout. This was the one that blitzed everything else. What I need to say about this whiskey and why I'm putting it in this Infinity bottle is that the people that like this style of whiskey, this super, super PX, super sweet, super sherry, uh, active sherry cask whiskey, um, and I can understand why it's a wonderful treat, it really is, but for me it's always a kind of single dram treat. It's not kind of a Moorish thing that you go back for more. It's really rich. It's really quite heavy. But if they like those flavours, explore sherry. And I don't mean that to be cheeky. I mean, genuinely explore sherry as a, as just as a nice, comfortable drink to enjoy. Um, and also sacrifice a wee dram of this to pour over some ice cream, especially vanilla ice cream. Uh, it works a treat. I'm not gonna pour all of this in. I'm gonna keep a wee dram of this. In fact, for I, There's my wee funnel. I've got my wee funnel here. I'm going to fill up the dram first so that I can give a wee dram of this to somebody at some point in the future. Now, normally I would have rinsed that out because there's going to be a, a never so slight coating of a Glen Elgin 12 in that bottle. But less than 55.5% tomato and PX is going to blow it away. Um, and that's going to give me plenty to add a really rich, syrupy, thick, sweet lick to this wee infinity bottle. Now, it's going to be a lot of you curling your toes at what I've just done there. I know that because of how precious you see this. And especially when Tomatin have jumped in price from, this was under £100, I think I paid £90 or £100, something of that order for this. I think it's about 150 to buy this now. But I've had my time with it. I've had my time with it a couple of times over. And there are lots of whiskies out there that do what this does. Now, the Scotch Test Dummies managed to prove that this was better than everything else in their shootout, but it wasn't like head and shoulders better. They struggled. They gave it the nudge. They gave it the nod. There are lots of other whiskey experiences out there, and sometimes you have to just let these ones go. The cabinet only has so much space. Your palate only has so much to decipher. 
sometimes these whiskies get better in their memory. Still, I would give this 9 out of 10. And I would put it back in the cabinet, but not at 145 or 150 pounds or whatever it is now. It's going to do a good job in the bottom uh, as part of that wee infinity bottle. Oh, well, I've been chatting there. I've missed a wee dram from Per. He's brought me a wee sticker as well. Thank you very much, Per. Thank you so much for the virtual dram, my friend. Cheers. McAllen Fine and Rare has left, Roy. You've taken it too far. And Jimmy Legg is saying, I just didn't want you to put that in there. Think about it. If that infinity bottle is lifted to be a much, much better experience, just from putting the, those two or three drams in the infinity bottle, it's actually going to be something that I'll drink. So many infinity bottles you're going to make up and you're going to put in your cabinet, and you've got so many other malts going on that you don't touch the experimental infinity bottles that you've been playing with. And you know in your mind that the infinity bottles are often filled up with crap. Actually try and put a few nice, really rich things in there. I've put a 34-year-old whiskey in here. I've put um, that tomato and PX in there. Just to give it a bit of richness. And if you, who was it, uh, who was it that's sad that I've put it in there? Sorry, I missed it. Was it, uh, was it Jim? Was it Whiskey Novice? Whoever it was, there's a wee sample of this. And if you've never ever tried it, it'll be sitting there waiting. You can claim it. Few drinks can beat Sherry's quality to price ratio, says Lindsay Holman. Um, I don't have much experience. I haven't been buying much of it. I'm kind of, I'm not really practicing what I'm preaching there. But I do have a couple of Sherry's in the at home. And when, when my wife and I go to Spain, we, the Sherry is ridiculously good in Spain, of course. And it's ridiculously inexpensive as well. Um, it's wonderful uh, to, to experiment with and play with. And when you sip it in... Spain in a warm climate, it just kind of makes sense. Glasgow police just received calls of some illicit whiskey blending in the posh end of Glasgow. <laughs> this is the east end of Glasgow, Gregor. Eh, tied to a car alarm, apparently. <laughs> you better speed up proceedings, Roy. <laughs> Cresimir is saying, no. Nah, you've got to chill out. You've got to relax. There's just too much whiskey. Uh, whiskey novice is saying, hi, don't mind, mate. It was Doc who spat the dummy. <laughs> Doc's here. And saying, for me, it was one of the best whiskies I had, and he's had some since 1966. Doc, there will be more PX cask everything out there. Our baggy saying, good evening, Roy. Good to see you. Finally, good to have you in. Andy, wonderful to welcome you here. Tom Lawrence is in. Uh, uh, bottle that breaker, beaker and cap it. Don't let the whiskey uh, evaporate during the broadcast. Uh, you can, it's 12 degrees outside, Tom. Uh, this, the whiskey's going nowhere. There's no evaporation going on. Um, uh, uh, Lee J is saying, Roy, I was one payday a month away from purchasing that PX when they sold out. Uh, sorry to hear, Lee J. And uh, Chris Beaton is saying, damn it, Mr. Aquaviti, have a great summer with the family. Thank you so much, Chris. I will do. Uh, I didn't bring a pen out here. Uh, Lee J, I'm going to send this down to you. You can claim this. You can have this, my friend, if you missed it, if you got that close to it. Uh, you can have this tomato and PX. Whiskey in the Six is in. Rob, he's brought me a wee drama. He's saying cheers, brother. Rob, thank you so much. There was an idea that my last uh, VPUB before the summer break was going to be all about getting the YouTubers together and having a kind of um, uh, a bit of a collaborative effort. But I ran out of time with weather challenges and things, and this is what I'm doing. I'm sitting in my driveway. Um, having a kind of uh, go at a recycled review. Oliver Travis is in as well, saying the lid keeps the wee beasties out. Aye, that's a point, actually. i tell you what I'll do then. Put a wee tea cloth over it. We are, we are a beastie-free zone right now, because I think the beasties are enjoying the lights too much. Because I've got something else to add to that uh, infinity bottle. Uh, before I bottle it tonight. Gavin is saying, there are no posh parts in the East End. Uh, I was brought up in Deniston, aye. 
still it's a good place to be brought up gavin i hope you enjoyed it uh, lee j brown is saying uh, wow to jenner sorry thank you no problem lee j it's yours kevin grant on whiskey is saying i have to bow out just now but that infinity bottle is looking something special hopefully catch up soon we will get a chance to come over here kevin and get a wee go on it my friend okay jimmy like is saying you just have a tea cloth around at all times don't you if you're going to be making and pouring and putting things into jugs and using wee funnels and things like that you're going to get whiskey everywhere um there's always in the v-pub there's always a bar cloth lying around jimmy absolutely okay let's go on with this still got a few bottles to get through let's finish the recycling uh, i'm slacking a wee bit here once my face okay two indies before i get into my last five okay um this is another Gordon and McPhail bottling. This is a Buna Haven 2006 vintage. Now, this is part of their McPhail's collection. Now, their entire range has been rejigged in recent months, so this isn't quite as valid as it was a couple of years ago. Sometimes this comes out with an eight-year-old age statement on it. Sometimes it comes out with a vintage, but it's always very, very decent stuff. Some, excuse me, sometimes it's heavily peated. This is not the, the heavily peated one, although the labeling is very, very similar. You need to look, sometimes it will say heavily peated on it. This is the unpeated version at 43%, and I thought this was damn good. I have to say it's been a having from 2006. It's not going to be anything other than good. I'm not in a hurry to replace this. There's hundreds of things to try out there. There's hundreds of been a havens and things. But it was a rich, nice whiskey. And for a 2006 been a having, so sitting about, I think, 10 or 11, maybe 12 years at a push old, it was very good value as well at about £35. Decent stuff, an 8 out of 10. So many of you are going to know what's on this label as well. I've talked about this in my very first ever recycled review, although this is a different cask. Uh, 8687 was the famous cask that we all go nuts for. But the price of Klein Leash is off the scale now. 1995 Klein Leash from Signature Vintage is being sold for £250, £270 a bottle now. I paid 90 for this. I paid 90 for the original 8687. This is cask 8688. It was damn good. Maybe nostalgia's got something to do with it, but it was just a notch under the 8687 for me, but it was still a wonderful, wonderful bottle of whiskey, and I was very glad to have this, and I get through it like always. I get through Klein Leash far too quickly. When this is open in the cabinet, I struggle to reach past it. This is still a 9 out of 10 whiskey. But at that price, no. It's time to find something else to enjoy because Klein Leash is too expensive now, honestly speaking. That is getting a bit full now, isn't it? Jamie Brown is saying I've been enjoying independent uh, bottling of Buna's a lot more recently than the standard bottlings. Uh, Lady of the Glen and Stoysha bottlings are great. Stoysha is peated. Uh, Lady of the Glen as well. Fantastic stuff, Jamie. I'm glad you're connecting with it. It's usually not badly priced as well. Wonderful stuff. So that's me down to my last five bottles. And the last five bottles that I have here are repeat bottles. These are bottles that have appeared in recycled reviews before. And it's yet another thing that slows up the time from one re cycled review to the next we've got lockdown we've got the fact that i'm drinking all of these kind of uh, niche type products and things that i'm not able to get through the same amount of whiskey that i was getting through when i was really going crazy and sharing and sending whiskey everywhere um but we've got another thing where, where when you do go back and you replace it again when you do put it back on the shelf where's the validity in talking about it in a recycled review well there is a validity if it's changed if you want to say something else about it or but if it's much the same as the, 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 what you said the last time, it's just another empty bottle to get rid of. But I've got a five of them here tonight, and we'll get through those in a wee minute. Doc is saying, uh, I've really, wait a minute, I got a great price for that signature Klein Leash for you. Um, yes, you did, Doc, you did. I'm talking about me now, today. If you go out and try uh, Sevi, Scott Monroe, and, and I um, message backwards and forwards on a discussion today, and there was a bottle on Master and Malt, 1995 Klein Leash from Signature Vintage going for £270 and it had sold out. Now, I don't know, maybe it was a single bottle. I don't know how much stock they had. But people are buying it at that price. It's good whiskey. It's damn good. It's really good whiskey, honestly, it is. 
um, especially mid nineties clean leash, nineteen nineties clean leashes. Uh, everything is there. The, and remember that these are tend to be from refill sherry butts. People that really love clean leash love it from a bourbon cask, and I and I agree with that. I think it's amazing. But a lot of these refill butts, the sherry is not oppressive. It's not super active. It's a refill sherry butt, so it's sitting there a wee bit quiet. Um, but two hundred and seventy pounds is getting ridiculous. I don't have that kind of money to spend on it, and I love, love, love clean leash. Matthew's here, multi agus muncher. Good evening, all. Good evening, Roy. Just in from walking the dog, but been watching on the phone. Hope all are well. I, it's so difficult to comment on a mobile device, phones and tablets and things. It's better when you're comfy. You can get your feet up with a dram in hand. Malcolm, hope you enjoyed your wee walk and it's nice to have you in, my friend. Malcolm was here participating in a wee game of Is It A Space Side uh, a week or so ago. Okay, let's see. It's getting a wee bit chilly. I'm going to do these uh, other five bottles. I'm going, to, I'm going to tease you with something as well something that I've been talking about for a long time, but it's finally here. Uh, I'm going to send them out on approval to a couple of folk first to get their feedback before I release them generally, but rather than have you waiting until the end of summer, uh, I'll talk about it just now. Um, glass toppers, let's just hint at that. Jimmy Legg is saying, Reef of Sherry is the only way I really like it. Oh, wow. Raymaster is saying, uh, heels please. <laughs> uh, Alan McLaughlin is saying, do you think bottles still exist out in the wild? Uh, for that signatory, uh, would it have made it uh, abroad? Uh, the signatory vintage Klein Leash. I mean, I heard when I first started to get into that about four or five years ago, when that when Whiskey Rev and I first discovered that cask 8687, uh, Andrew Simington himself told us that he had a large par parcel of stock, that there was plenty more of that to come over the years. Um, how much he means by that, how much more he's got now, uh, how long that's going to last, I really don't know. I have no intelligence on that whatsoever. All I know is that at 250, 270 pounds, it's becoming a challenge. It's, it's a pause and think. I mean, really, that's starting to, it's out of my reach now. Simon Ray saying, evening, Ryan, everyone. Nice to see you all before the summer break. Listen, it's wonderful to see uh, so many of you in hanging out with me, uh, well over 300 of you. Fantastic. Probably because you think this is a recycled review. Well, it's not. It's me sitting with the moths and the bugs in the, my driveway to try and bring you a last VPUB before the summer break and uh, trying to do some kind of hybrid uh, recycled review along with um, a VPUB. Let's see how it's going. There will be a quiz at the end, but let's finish off the recycling before we get there. I've not done any bottle tossing, have I? I mean, that would be just asking for trouble if I started that. This is Tomatin Legacy. I get through a ridiculous amount of this because you can always pick it up and offer 22, 23, 24 pounds in the supermarket, 43%. And um, we've talked and talked and talked about it. If you've ever doubt this, just look at some of the blind challenges that this has done so well. And Vin from Lawrence's Whiskey put this second in his blind challenge. When I did the blind challenge live back in December, a couple of the guys picked this as their favourite and it was up against some serious competition, 25-year-old Mortlack, and this was picked as the favourite. However, the most recent bottle I had of Tomatin Legacy, not this one, but the one that's open in there just now, is different, it's changed, and that's inevitable. But it's got really spirity now. It's become much younger all of a sudden. Quite a step change from this bottle to the newer one. And I'm not saying it's a try before you buy you're paying £23 for it. There's nothing to talk about. However, um, whiskey doesn't stay the same. Consistency is a very difficult bedfellow for whiskey. And I have to say that my most recent bottle of tomato will sit there longer than this one did. This was lovely and rich and sweet and easy. And I was pouring it happily for everybody. The newer one is much more spirit driven. This one, coupled with that one, let's give it a score over both of them and give it a seven and a half out of 10. <coughs> that one smashed. Lead chick. Again, probably get through more of this than I do to Martin Legacy. Perhaps one of the best value whiskies out there, certainly in the top five, top 
free potentially honestly in terms of value if you can get this for about 35 pounds or less it's a 10 year old peated whiskey from mull from tobermory distillery and it's wonderful stuff it's natural it's uh unchill filtered it's 46.3 percent nothing to talk about this value for this whiskey and if you've got anybody that's seen all electric i'm not sure blend uh, or sorry uh, uh distillery snobs or whatever pour it for them blind it's wonderful stuff, honestly, and it seems to get better. I would give this 8.5 out of 10. You could even push me to 9 out of 10 based on its value alone. This is fantastic stuff. And it just show, the amount I get through, I've got another bottle in there just now. The amount of this I get through tells you it's one of those whiskies that I think you need to have in the cabinet. <coughs> got two more to go. I missed a super chat. Somebody bought me a wee dram. Red Sox 367 bought me a dram and saying thanks for all you do. Thank you, Red Sox. Thank you so much for your for your generosity as well. Cheers, my friend. I, I feel the only thing I'm achieving tonight is being a bit strange, a bit weird sitting in my driveway as I throw bottles into the bin. Two more to go. But honestly, they're two of the best ambassadors for Scotch whiskey that exists right now. See if you can guess what they are. Lagavulin like 16. Coloured, yes. Chill filtered, yes. 43%, yes. 16 year old age statement, 50 pounds or less. Nothing to talk about. It's probably responsible for converting more of my friends to Scotch whiskey than anything else that's in existence. It is inconsistent. Some years are better than others. Some bottles are better than others. But generally, this is wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. It's maybe not what I'm drinking right now. It's only very occasionally I'll have a Lagavulin, honestly. There's lots more that's more interesting in the cabinet, but this still needs to have its place. It's very, very good at what it does. And for that reason, this is... 16-year-old Isla single malt, Lagavulin for 50 pounds. It's nine out of 10. Mix the value in and it's nine out of 10. And all got arguments for that. But you need to build in the fact that I am, I owe my life trajectory to this whiskey as well. So yes, uh, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it, as you all know. And the whiskey of recent years, honestly, nothing can touch this. This stands head and shoulders above everything else. Value, quality, flavour. People that come to me and say, oh, that, that whiskey you tried, you gave me, it's a bit subtle. Pause, spend some time with it, drink it in contrast with other things. I can see uh, Super Chats come in and I'll get to you in a minute once I share with you Cochran 12. It's wonderful stuff. I hope that you can see this. I hope that the lighting is working out okay. Uh, Cochran 12 year old. It's amazing whiskey, 38 pounds of that order. And it's incredible. I'll tell you how incredible it is. It's really, it's been difficult to buy it recently. It's out of stock in the UK. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue with supply chain and we'll get to it soon. But Cochran 12, honestly, it's nine and a half out of 10. And I think that's the highest score I've ever given to a whiskey in a recycled review. That's because I'm weaving the value into it as well and the quality it brings at 12 years old for that money. It's ridiculously good. Fully natural, 46% as well. <coughs> Cochran are killing it. I hope that it lasts. I've got one bonus bottle that I've got here that's uh, sad. It's always sad for me because it's going to be harder and harder to replace this. But this is my Longmorn 16. I've managed to finish another bottle of this. This was gifted to me by my friend and fellow barfly, Error McFault. Um, Error, I've finished your bottle, my friend, and I loved every sip of it. Every time I poured a glass of this, I thought about you. And I'm very, very grateful for you gifting me this bottle. Um, when I've got long more than 16 open at home, I get through it far too quickly. It's a wonderful, wonderful whiskey. It appeared in the first ever recycled review I ever did. I gave it a nine out of 10. I explained to everybody that it is long discontinued. It's still the case. This is auction fodder or gifts from people that have stock of it. Um, but it's actually become a nine and a half for me as well. Truly amazing whiskey that we unfortunately can't get anymore. It's not 150 pounds amazing. Maybe you could push me to admit it's 125 pounds amazing, but once it goes north of that, there's lots of other experiences out there. This has got a lot to do with uh, nostalgia and memories and moments for me. 
and I love the stuff. I absolutely love it. This is my, it's close to my favorite whiskey. It's got so much complexity, so much bite, so much spice, so much grip, so much texture, so much, and yet it's utterly quiet in other ways. Love it, absolutely love it. Nine and a half out of 10. <coughs> so there you go, that's the bottles that I'm not gonna share with you in the next recycled review. If you want a wee sneak peek at the bottles that I'm gonna share with you in the next recycled review, I'm happy to grab this basket and go through a, a, a few with you. But I want to show you something else first. Let's get back to these super chats before they disappear. Thank you so much for your patience and generosity. Eric is in and he's bought me a dram. Eric Cunliffe, my friend, he's saying, Roy, you're a gem and deserve a nice holiday. Thank you for such a great year already. Buy a dram on your tour from me. We all love you. Renee says hello. Hello, Eric, to you and Renee as well, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you around here and thank you for your generosity. Zar, Des, wherever you are, you've given, you've bought me a super dram in the currency of Zar. Thank you, my friend. Uh, no comment or whatever, Des. Uh, if you want to leave it, if you want to mention a comment, I'll try and pick it up. But thank you, my friend. Slajava to you. Cheers. We've been, we've been playing a wee game of Is It a Space Side? And I realized that when I was encouraging people to send drams to each other, I was potentially getting myself in a bit of trouble. I don't want to encourage people to ship drams over borders because sometimes it's legal, sometimes it's not so legal. You need to check with the shipper, with the customs, with wherever it is that you live. You need to check um, and not get yourself in any trouble. I don't want to encourage anybody to do anything that's illegal. And also you need to check and make sure that the person you're sending it to, you know that they're of the legal drinking age and all of these things. I don't want me mean to be preachy, but I'm kind of backing off a wee bit. The next recycled review, you'll not see me doing a heels please giveaway. I'll do something different with patrons instead. Um, so instead of me encouraging people to play the game of Visit Space Aid, and use samples as forfeits, by all means, if you want to do that, if you know it's all above board, fine, I'm not going to get in the way of that. But I'm going to send these sniper coins and they eventually arrived. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to uh, focus in, but you see the Glen Cairn with the crosshairs from the sniper there and around the, the border it says, is it a space side sniper? These cannot be bought, you can't buy these. These are glass toppers. And, uh, the only way to get these sniper coins is to play the game and win. Whether you win playing against me or whether you win as the first person in the in the lounge in the chat that manages to get that you you'll get yourself a coin. Now these have been delivered. Um, I'm hoping that I get a chance to get all my backlog. I owe probably close to maybe 50 or 60 coins I need to ship out. Uh, some of you have won multiple. Cressimir, I think, is the king. He's won more than anyone. Tabitha Adams is doing very well as well. There's a few people out there that's won a few coins, and I'll send you your multiple for however, however many glass toppers you've managed to get. These can finally be shipped. The reason for the big delay on these is that these are made from food safe acrylic. And it's probably one of the biggest, most in-demand materials that exists right now because of the current pandemic situation and everybody putting in those safety screens everywhere. So I had to wait a wee bit longer than I otherwise would have. So now I can tease this. Uh, this is a wee uh, felt uh, velour bag, a wee tie bag with Aquavite branding on it there. Um, I've been promising this for a long time, but this is the new merch. This is completely... Uh, brand new this week. Um, inside this wee bag comes a set, a full flight's worth of uh, food safe acrylic uh, glass toppers. I'll just show you these quickly and I'll, I'll spend a bit more time. Uh, these go out to patrons first. Um, any that are left over will go into the online store that I'm building over the summer. I know I've been promised it for a long time. Thank you for your patience. It's just been very, very difficult. You've got the Aquavite banner logo there. It's looking sharp. We've got the roundel that says it's not whiskey until it's shared. We've also got the other roundel that says whiskey evangelism on it. We have the barfly logo, which is fantastic. I love it. I think it could be my favorite. We've got the VPUB compass there as well that you've all come to recognize. And it says it's not whiskey until it's shared on it as well. This is the, uh, I'm trying to see the best way that you can, the compass logo. And we've got, of course, 
recycled reviews. We've got the the bin itself immortalized on a glass topper with the basket here, the style of basket at the bottom with a cork and a wee bottle lying around in the floor and things. So that's the set of six. Um, there's, there is another coin, there's an evangelist coin, a secret seventh coin uh, that, that's got a banner on it saying whiskey sharing evangelist that goes out to patrons. They, they can't be bought, that just when patrons buy one of these they'll get a seventh coin in there and uh, those will make it out into the world over the course of the summer. I've been waiting a long time for them. I'm very glad that they're here. I like them a lot. I hope that you guys like them too. Uh, Richard Agnew is saying how much, how much. Um, honestly, I I'm not sure yet. The reason that I'm going to send out a, a couple on approval is I'm going to just ask people, I'm going to tell people uh, what I, I would like to sell them for in order for, for the effort to have made it worthwhile. Um, and if I get negative feedback from that, then I'll, I'll bring it down a wee bit. Um, but I have, to, I have to make money on it. It's, it's to support the channel. It's it's merch. Any merch is, is designed to do that. Um, but it's going to be in the order of £25, maybe a wee bit less. Let's see. Let's see. Jean de la Cuisine is saying, I guess I need to become a patron. And honestly, I've bought enough, Jean, that I should be able to give to give anything goes to these guys that are, it's not, I don't mean to put a class system or anything in place. I, I hate that. But it's an inevitability that, that, that they've been supporting me, some of them for for nigh on three years now, honestly, two and a half years. And you know, that they, they get first dibs on the things that they are actively helping me shape. It's patrons that are my sounding board, my um, brain trust, my, uh, my sanity chamber, honestly, sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's, it, I get emotional when I talk about patrons because the whole concept is beyond uh, anything that you could ever have imagined a few years ago, that, that you could do something like this and people would encourage you to do it and people would encourage you financially as well. And I don't mean you know, lots and lots and lots of money. I'm just saying that, that, they, that, that they see you almost as a, I don't know, a subscription or something like the amount of people that are buying me drums tonight. It's just amazing. It's, I'm sitting, I'm just a guy sitting in my driveway <laughs> next to his recycling bin. It's, it's absurd. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, Bud Jenkins is saying, we will pay 25 for great merch and we are helping our favourite channel. Thanks, Bud. Hoyt is saying, we need the giant Aquavita coin. I was going to bring it out tonight, but I was so nervous of it rolling off the bin or something like that and it getting damaged with the wind. I didn't want it out in the rain. I just didn't, I didn't want to risk it. I will find a way to honour that amazing, uh, huge wooden coin uh, from, from Mark Goins. I don't even know if Mark's in tonight. Fantastic. Listen, I can see... Um, Jimmy, like I said, I'm not helping with the sanity. Sorry about that. Uh, just go ahead. Mark Gones is here. He's saying just go ahead and sell it for 25. That's a deal. Uh, good. I'll send it out so that people can hold them in their hands and actually use them in the practical sense and play with them and, and see kind of how they go. I'll, I'll actually I'll put some on a glass or two here. Then I'll bring up the other camera and see if we can make that look okay. There we go. I'll just bring out a couple of random ones. Uh, that's the secret one. We don't want to use, we'll put the sniper coin on here. And there you can see how they work. Now, what I was going to do, you can see that there's a wee, there's a wee etched uh, border in it. And what I was going to try to do was get the border so that it fitted and, and it could almost act as a wee locking mechanism there. But that's not ideal because the Glen Cairns are not uniform and it, it caused all sorts of problems. We were trying to etch too deep. It was causing little fissures and the quality was going downhill. So now they've, they, all, they just go on the smooth side and the engraved side faces up to you. So there you go. That's them on the top. And hopefully they're compact enough so that they're portable in their wee pouch. Um, I know that my friend uh, Dave Crichton carries around Pringle lids and Dave uh, is one of the guys that's going to be sent out a wee pack of these to try all them out and see how he gets on. Anyway, let's see how we're getting on with our affinity. Because what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to top this off. So we'll keep this camera on here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of grip here. We're going to add a bit of weight, a bit of texture. We're going to add a wee bit of smoke, a bit of spice. Um, and we're just going to bring the alcohol up. In order to do that, I'm going to reach out to this SMW S bot line. This is a Highland Park that I don't really get on with. I don't really love this. I've got my cat in, in the basket now playing with the, the discarded coins. Um, I don't really get on with this as a single malt in itself. I think it's okay. I've managed to get through maybe a little over half of the bottle, as you see there. But it's not my favourite bottle from SMWS. It's a Highland Park 12-year-old. But it does have a wee puff of smoke to it. Uh, it does have a nice kind of coastal note, a lot of spice and pepper. And the big thing that you'll see if you look a wee bit closer, I don't know if you can pick that up, it's 65.2% uh, ABV. So I'm just going to top off my Infinity bottle there with a big dollop of high ABV Highland Park. I'll get my wee uh, tea towel back over it, leave it for a bit, and I'll transfer that into the Infinity bottle a wee bit later. In fact, should I just do it now? I've got a funnel here and everything. Let's see how much of this I'm actually going to pour everywhere because the jug is overfilled a wee bit. Uh, let's see if I can do this. I have lost a dram. I'm losing half a dram. No, we're doing well now. We're doing good. We're going to fill this bottle and have some left over, I think. No, well, maybe not. Maybe this is only a, a pint jug. It is. It's only a pint. There we go. Which means that the stuff I poured off earlier top it off. So then we have quite an interesting wee experiment. That's the rest back on in there from the first ever VPUB recycled hybrid, whatever you want to call this. And we can leave we can leave this to marry and see how we got on. Now, I fully expect that I've made a hot mess of this. I fully imagine this is going to be terrible. But the amazing thing about Infinity Bottles generally is that if you leave them for long enough, even when you think you've made a mess of it, don't think that it's throwaway time. Leave it. Then leave it a bit longer and leave it. And it marries and it comes together. And even if it doesn't get perfect yet, it'll get to a point where you feel like you know what direction you want to take it in. You want to add a bit of richness to it, you want to add a bit of spice, you want to lighten it up a bit, freshen it up, you want to bring the ABV up, whatever it may be. Actually smells pretty great. <laughs> Alistair Gray is saying, label and seal that bottle. Stick it on SWA, you'll get thousands. Aye, I'll get prison as well. A whiskey bond is saying I'll be around uh, <laughs> to suck the spillage off your driveway. <laughs> Molly Mission is saying, how about a good measure of teapot dram batch seven? Aye, it's a good idea. Honestly, it, that would be a perfect a contender just to, you don't need to give up a lot of it. Teapot dram is quite expensive now as well, £120. You don't need to give up a hell of a lot of it to just lift and turn a bottle of pretty average infinity bottle into something that's really quite nice. You can sit on the couch and enjoy something that you've made yourself. Let's have a go and see how this is playing out tonight. No bugs. This It's smoky. There's not much smoke in this. The only smoky thing I've put in is from that island park. Ah, it's busy. <laughs> it's busy. Uh, the, the finish is very salty, smoky. Um, it went, it, if you've ever done this at home, um, you start to realise the, the, the skill that's in blending and also why patience is so important as well. 
yes, it's a wee bit of a hot mess right now. <laughs> but I'll give it time and see how we go on with it. Graham Horner has bought me a dram. Going to head off here up early tomorrow. Catch the remainder on replay. Hope you can join us for the quiz tomorrow, Graham. Enjoy uh, the more than well-deserved holiday, Roy Slant. You well, honestly, guys, I don't know uh, how tonight has gone down with everybody. I think it's all a wee bit bizarre. Anybody that's tuning in is probably just tuning in for the absolute surreal, bizarre nature of what's actually happening somebody is sitting with light switched on in their driveway talking about bizarre whiskey concepts but it's fun for me i'm enjoying it and uh, i i promised this and i've got to see through my promises even if they're not always the best of ideas please stay around for the quiz it's quarter past 11 i'm going to roll into the quiz now um i'm going to um Make no apologies for the quiz. It was put together in a hurry. It's an easy one tonight, though. Of course, it's going to be an easy one. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. The quiz at the end is always just a bit of fun. I know that the numbers drop off. But people do, even people that didn't enjoy it at the beginning, they start to enjoy it because they're not expecting too much of themselves. And hopefully one quiz every now and again will give you a wee bit of inspiration that will take you down a, a, a wee path of research or exploration. Um, whether it's knowledge or the next whiskey experience or something, it's more than just a quiz. Uh, it's meant to be a bit of fun as well. Richie Z is a new star. Richie, it's so nice to have you in. He's bought me a dram and he said, a dram for you, Roy. And cheers. I'll raise this glass of this uh, freshly prepared infinity bottle, Richie, and I'll say, Slancha, thank you so much, my friend. Cheers. Looks like we've got enough battery. To get through the quiz, I think. Uh, let's see if I can make this work. So there's lots to there's lots to talk about. There's lots um there's lots that's going to happen. I'll be developing and working on things over the summer break. Uh, tune in to me on the regular social media channels. You can join the Aquavitae Barflies uh, group on Facebook. You can follow Aquavitae The Water of Life on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter as well. Um, and of course, I'll be here on YouTube. There will be a recycled review to come out over the summer as well. For my patrons and most of you guys, you'll hear everything first. My patrons, there will be a summer Zoom get together with a bit more structure than the dry run I tried recently. Um, I've got some good ideas. I hope that I can make it work over the summer as well. So my patrons uh, don't need to wait till the end of August, I guess. Uh, the next time I'll be back here will either be the 20th or the 27th of August. It'll depend on family commitments and things like that. But my summer break starts tonight. After the quiz tonight, we're finished. Uh, and for anybody that's heading off now before the quiz starts, thank you so much for your support and your attendance this year. And I'll catch you at the end of August. Thank you for everything. Okay, let's get this quiz on the go. Look how bright I am. I've just pulled up the camera. I've got this. I could play wee, wee shadows and things over there. Could, what have we got? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But yes, not the best image quality tonight. As long as you can see me and as long as you can hear me, that's all we need. Okay, good luck everybody for the quiz. I'm going to jump over to here to try and uh, monitor it with you guys. Don't have the same amount of real estate on the screen that I normally have. Don't let me pull in this quiz and wish you all the best of luck. Multiple choice, 10 questions. You just keep your own score. There are no prizes. Um, but I may, for people that make me laugh tonight, I may share a wee dram of my infinity bottle with you if you're so interested. Question one. Good luck, everybody. Not do's Anox, 16 year old. Now discontinued, unfortunately, was unique in the lineup due to what? A, it was a UK exclusive. B, the only one to be released at 46% ABV. Or C, matured only in ex bourbon casks. Let's match the background up with the screen. There we go. That looks better, doesn't it? Whiskey Jason is in tonight. Thank you, Jason. McAllen Fine and Rear. Alistair Gray, thank you so much to um, 
to all my moderators over the last few weeks. It's brilliant to have you in. It's brilliant to have you here as your support as well. Wow, this is splitting people more than I imagined. I thought people would get this, although the vast majority seem to be on it. Some people think that Anoc 16 was a UK exclusive. Uh, I think it finally went discontinued in 2016, maybe aye, 2015, 2016. It disappeared of that order. I still miss it greatly. Fortunately, I've got some there. Thanks to Doc McAllen. Fine and rare in Germany. Managed to source some for me. I'm very grateful to have it. Uh, I gifted a bottle of it to uh, the Whiskey Rev. And I'm looking forward to sharing, hopefully, an Anoc 16. Uh, Rev, if you're watching tonight, I hope you're planning and opening your Anoc 16. Uh, I'll maybe bring up mine, just in case you're not. So much of you. Right. I, I, absolutely spot on with this. Um, Absolutely, you know that it indeed it is C. It was unique to the uh, Knock Do Anok range and that it was exclusively, there was no sherry or ex sherry cask in here at all. It was exclusively ex bourbon, perhaps. One of the reasons I loved it so, but it was one of the whiskies that taught me how much I love that style of maturation. Well done if you answered C. Go on to question two and ask. Which of these Ardbeg expressions was discontinued in 2006? I'm going to bring up three Ardbeg expressions. Tell me which one was would disappeared in 2006. A, 10-year-old. B, Arinambisht. C, the 17-year-old. One of those three Ardbegs was discontinued in 2006. Anybody that's... Um, a member of the Aquavitae Barflies, if you support through YouTube, if you've joined, if you've clicked on the join button under the video there, uh, you get access to the emojis and things like that in the YouTube chat. So there are banana skin emojis, there are Glen Cairn emojis, epic bottle emojis, recycled emojis, lots of good fun barfly style things. Um, A, 10 year old, B, Arina Ambeshed, C, 17 year old. Jimmy Legg is saying it better not be a weird A. <laughs> no, it's in there to try and throw you. It's a, almost like a double bluff. Um, it is the 17 year old that was uh, discontinued in 2006. Now, in 2007 slash 2008, Arian Ambeshed came out for a, for a very small run. It was quite a limited edition product. And a lot of people at the time believed that Arian Ambeshed replaced the 17 year old. Uh, but it was just a, a simple fact that they didn't have the stock to maintain the 17-year-old going forward. And that's why it was discontinued. Arin is I think it's Gaelic for place of the beast or hideout of the beast or something like that. Um, that only stuck around for a couple of years and you'd have to pay three £350 more perhaps for that. But that's probably a similar price actually now for the 17-year-old Ardbeg long since discontinued. There's a picture of the bottle there. So if you answered C, give yourself a point, and I'll ask you, Elijah Craig's bourbon is named after whom? Well, Elijah Craig, of course. But if I'm going to ask you, what or what was Elijah Craig? What did he do? Was he A, a military general? Was he B, a corn farmer? Or was he C, a Baptist preacher? Who was Elijah Craig? What was he all about? Now we know him because of his small batch, we know him because of his barrel proof, his single barrels, premium, or some say a super premium bourbon whiskey. Yeah, this infinity bottle is uh Uh, it's a bit out there. I think I'm not particularly proud of myself right now, but you have to have patience with these things. Andrew Butler is saying, are we on the high seas for all? He seems to think that Elijah Craig was a Baptist preacher, I guess. C again. Okay, C. Don't pass whiskey, C. Uh, and repeatedly, a nut job. <laughs> Reputedly a nut job, perhaps you're saying. And uh, Mark Gons is saying, I usually do terrible if I get the first ones right. Uh, Christina Zerpoli is in. Great to see you, Christina. You're thinking that it's C as well. You're absolutely right. Elijah Craig was, of course, a Baptist preacher. I didn't do very well to try and trick you into thinking it was anything else there at all. All about C tonight, Roy. Well, I pay no attention to those things, uh, Meno. I've said it in the past. 
So if it's if it's three C's so far, it could be just a coincidence. Let's have a wee look. Question four. As well as a Glasgow cask strength and a cognac addition, Douglas Lane's Epicurean also has what? Belfast Whiskey Club has bought me a dram saying, uh, may I offer 10 tasting sets, tickets to the Belfast Whiskey Week for the first to get 10 out of 10 tonight. So there you go. There's a prize, not from me. I don't give prizes out. If uh, anybody scores a genuine 10 out of 10 tonight, uh, you might be able to contact Paul at Belfast Whiskey Club. Paul, drop in your contact details through the Everbright page, the Facebook page, however it is you want to do. And I'll ask the admin or the moderators to make sure the link gets through. Uh, but Paul is offering 10 out of 10 prizes this week. I smell there are going to be more 10 out of 10 prizes than there otherwise would be. Anyway, I'm asking as well as a Glasgow cast strength and a cognac edition, Douglas Ling's Epicurean also has what? A, an Edinburgh cask strength, B, a sherry edition, or C, a bartender's edition. Maybe a bit more Googling goes on all of a sudden now that there are prizes. Whiskey Jason has got 10 out of 10 already, Jimmy Leg, Bill Balistrieri. <laughs> Superb. Tabitha Adams, lots of you. Neil Cochran has already scored 10 out of 10. Wonderful. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Get in touch with Paul from Belfast Whiskey Week and claim your tasting sets for the festival. <laughs> ah, wonderful. I can answer this one is actually A. Douglas Lane now has also an Edinburgh cask strength version of the lowland epicurean the lowland side and the remarkable regional malts they're all tied to uh, the notion of a scotch whiskey region so we've got islands we've got highlands we've got spacey we've got isla we've got campbelltown in the gauldrons and we've got the epicurean which is the lowland glasgow and edinburgh so there you go fantastic stuff um C was put in there as a, a wee bit of a banana skin because these are developed, the lowland malts are developed with the input of bartenders. Certainly that was the case with the Glasgow cast strength version. I'm not sure how they came around uh, to have uh, the Edinburgh version. Anyway, this is a quite a self-indulgent uh, question five. The pictorial one this week is a bit of an odd one. Have a wee look at this. This is a picture of me. The camera is inside the recycling bin. Uh, this was uh, still from one of the recycled reviews, but I'm going to ask you, which episode was this from? Recycled review three, six, or nine? A, episode three, B, episode six, or C, episode nine? Which one was I staring down the bin and speaking into the bin? Now, I'll ask you to imagine being my neighbour and looking down the driveway to see Roy staring into his bin and speaking loudly. Uh -huh. Very strange. Jimmy Legg thinks this is an asshat question. I don't mind you thinking that it's an asshat question one bit, Jimmy. Kresimir is rightly pointing out that it is Hakushu. That's the non-age statement. Hakushu wasn't that great. Thought it was barely okay, honestly. I'll put you out your misery and I'll tell you that uh, this still was from actually very recently episode nine where i stared into the bin to the camera i'm looking at my cat who's currently stalking me and wondering what i'm doing here graham fraser saying it's a bit of a banana skin question six under the current owners to Martin first ran a deliberate peated campaign in what year the reason i use the word deliberate in there is because in the past Peated malt has been mistakenly delivered to Tomatin. And I'm going back to the 80s and early 90s, um, and they just ran the malt through. And it wouldn't often be the case. They would go into huge malt hoppers. It would be just simply poured in there to separate it out or to try and change it out or swap it out. They just ran it through back in the, the day. But I'm talking about when they actually did a deliberate peated campaign. They first did 60,000 litres, but I'm going to ask you when. Was it A, 1999, B, 2005, or C, 2012? When did Tomatin first start to deliberately peat their malt? Now, it's a different process. There are different things that they do, different cut points, different fermentation times. Uh, so it's not simply a case of doing the exact same spirit with a peated malt as opposed to an unpeated malt. 
Um, it's become known as Kuboken now. We know it as Kuboken. When did they start distilling that? Some of those early uh, 1980s, 1990s distillates came out as Kuboken releases. So if you ever see a vintage Kuboken, it's come from that, or it's perhaps been tomato that's been aged in like a peated cask or something. Ah, Chris Amir is on four out of five. Apologising to Belfast Whiskey Club. Unlucky Chris Amir. Um, NAS could be recent. Yeah, it's non-age statement oftentimes. Okay, I will share with you that the first uh, deliberate uh, peated campaign from Tomatin was 2005. The last run of the year before maintenance, 60,000 litres in 2005. So if you... Uh, answer B, give yourself a point, and we go on to question seven and ask, what happened in 1855 that changed Scotch whisky forever? Now, this is the last in three exact same questions over the last three V-pubs. The only thing that's changed is the year, and the answers have been the same. So if you've been paying attention to the last couple of these V-pubs for question seven, this will be a freebie to you. What happened in 1855 that changed Scotch whisky forever? Was it the introduction of the Excise Act A? Or was it B, phylloxera hitting Europe? Or was it C, the invention of the coffee still? It's getting a wee bit cold out here now. I'm very glad that we're coming to the end of tonight's V-pub. Jim Legg is saying, I was born. <laughs> 1855, Jimmy. Wow. Erwin is on six out of six. Malcolm Douglas is in. It's thinking it's A, the Excise Act. Matt E thinks it's B, Jesus uh, Arevalo. Arevalo? Arevalo? Thinks it's A. Sid Martin thinks it's B. Dogs Have No Uncles thinks B. Uh, Jimmy Leg A, Malt Minion B. Catherine Bono, that looks like a new name, Catherine, I think. Thinking it's C. J. Francis also thinks it's C. He perhaps had to be paying attention to the last couple. The Excise Act was 1823, invention of the coffee still, I think, for memory, was 1831. And this is B, phylloxera, finally hit Europe. I'm not very sure of the exact year. Um, most of the, it was the 1850s generally. A couple of sources put a year in there, but it looked like somewhere around 1855. So if you answer B, that's what changed Scotch whiskey forever because it killed off phylloxera, phylloxera killed off all the vines across Europe or let's say next, next to all of them. Um, meaning that there was uh, very little wine around all of a sudden, so no brandy. Uh, suddenly scotch became very, very popular in the middle classes and the upper classes, scotch and soda, etc. Scotch was well placed to step in and take the place um, where grapes were not available. Question eight. I feel like I'm rushing this tonight, but it's getting cold. <laughs> Typical fermentation time at Glenfiddich is around what? Now you might think this is a bit of an asshat question. Oh no, he's talking about fermentation times now. But it's just to give you a gauge. Just to give you, when people start to talk about, oh, 110 hour fermentation times. Up, what does that mean? Is that a lot? Is that short? What does that mean? I'm asking, what is Glenfiddich's typical fermentation? Is it A, 48 hours, B, 72 hours, or C, 96 hours? Jimmy Legg is calling me a sissy. That's because I'm starting to feel a wee bit cold. You're right, Jimmy. I should just be getting some more of this spicy, ridiculously hot mess infinity bottle down me and sucking it up. Uh, Belfast Whiskey Club has dropped in the Eventbrite uh, link. You can highlight that, copy it, and they open up a wee browser and hopefully have a look at that a wee bit later. Um, by the way, there's no affiliation. Uh, there's nothing in it for me. I don't get paid commission. I'm purely supporting the Belfast Whiskey Festival because I like what they're doing. I like the scope of it. Um, I think it's huge. I think Paul's bitten off a lot more than he can potentially chew. Um, but you've got to love his drive, his passion. Um, and it looks like a, a fantastic thing. If I wasn't on holiday next week, I'd be participating a lot more, believe me. I can tell you, for all of you, the majority of you that's answered B, quite rightly, absolutely spot on. Glenfiddich is usually somewhere in the order of 65 to 75 hours. They say at the distillery, 72 hours. Fermentation. 
Second from last question, in the late 1970s, SMWS founder Pip Hills, together with some acquaintances, invested in a shared cask of what? So this is the years leading up to the launch of SMWS, but their first ever shared cask was famously what? A, Klein Leash, B, Glen Kinchy, C, Glen Farkless. So was it from the Klein Leash? Was it uh, from the Lowlands Edinburgh's distillery, Glen Kinchy? Or was it C, Glen Farkless? Pip Hills. <laughs> I don't know who Dave, precarious Dave, good to see you and Dave is uh, talking to. Dave, this, uh, this wee bag of coins is coming to you. Hopefully I'll get it in the post tomorrow. Um, I don't know who he's talking to, but he's saying he's with you on this one. I can share with you that uh, Pip Hill's first ever cask that he sourced in order to uh, do this kind of uh, buying a mature cask and bottling it and drinking it and selling it to friends at Cast Strength, similar to what I'm hoping to be able to do, although I've got no interest in building a society on the back of it. But it was C, Glen Farkless. Now, I don't know, I had the luxury of trying 1.1 SMWS 1.1 at a tasting a couple of years back. There was a bottle of that opened at the tasting. We all got to try it. It was an amazing privilege to be able to try that. I don't know if it was that cask. This was the late 70s. We're going back to 1979 or something. And SMWS founding year was 1983. So I think it was potentially a different cask. Uh, but the first ever 1.1 was also a Glen Farkless. Mark Gones is saying the Aqua Vitae Society. Well, we, we already are that, and we are doing just fine. The model seems to be working out quite well just now. Mark, what do you think? Um, eh, don't, don't try to fix what isn't broken, I think, is, is, uh, is the common wisdom, isn't it? That I've lost the chat, what's happened. So let's see what score we're at after nine questions, how we all getting on. Luna Aaron, good to see you, Luna. She's in seven out of nine. Des is on six out of nine. David Owen is believed he's got a pass on five out of nine. Alistair Gray, eight out of nine. Seven out of nine for Royal four three one. Richard Hall, eight out of nine. Good to see you, Richard. Uh, Neil Cochran already on a pass mark. Nine at five out of nine. Floyd Rodriguez, seven. Erwin is on nine out of nine. Peter Box, seven out of nine. Dogs of No Uncles, five out of nine. Claude Hooker, eight out of nine. Um, wonderful stuff. I'm looking for any other nine out of nines now. Mark Slinger, superb, Mark. Well done. I'm trying to frantically, um, Alt Minion, Chuck, you star, 9 out of 9, wonderful score. Uh, anybody else? Uh, apologies if I've missed any other 9 out of 9s. I um, can't even remember if question 10 is an ass hat tonight. It usually is. In fact, I remember what it is now. It's quite self-indulgent. It's another recycle review themed one. I hope you'll forgive me. But question 10 tonight is a wee bit of an ass hat. <laughs> And I'm asking relative to the how to pronounce, and that's how you pronounce Scotch whiskey, it's the most viewed on the channel. I want to ask the combined views of all 10 recycled reviews currently are what relative to the most viewed video on the channel, how to pronounce. Malcolm Dogs has bought me a drama scene. Have a fantastic summer, Roy. Brilliant evening. Thank you. Malcolm, uh, I'd be surprised if you've had a brilliant evening, but I'm very glad to hear it. Sledge my friend. Cheers. Thank you for your dram. Is it A, a little less? This is the combined views of all 10 recycled reviews. Or B, is it about twice as much? Or is it C, four times as much? Take all 10 recycled reviews, put them together. And relative to the most viewed video on the channel, which is the how to pronounce video, is it a little less, about twice as much or four times as much? Now you can Google this. <laughs> but I don't think you're going to have the time. Dogs of No Uncles thinks B, Erwin thinks B, Alistair Gray thinks B as well. Um, Peter Wilcox also, and Chuck also thinks B, Willie Dolier thinks B. Lots of people seem to think B twice as much, um, but it is an ass hat question. It is splitting you quite a lot. Greg's Whiskey Gary's saying, no idea, so B. 
Greg, well done. B, absolutely. Um, adding together all the 10 recycled reviews. I mean, they are a bit of a cult thing. They do very well. The views are high. Um, but just to put it into context, if you add all 10 videos together, it gets to about I don't know, somewhere between 200 and 250,000 views. Um, and just that one, how to pronounce Scotch whiskey, has done, uh, I think, about 130,000 views. So um, the answer was, it was uh, B, about twice as much. So let me get back to here, uh, remove that. Here we go. Jump back into the chat to see, did anybody manage that 10 out of 10? Did, I think Chuck definitely got it because I saw that he got 10. Malt Minion, so you start, you got 10 out of 10. Great score, wonderful stuff, well done. Um. <laughs> Jimmy Jazz, uh, great to see you in, Jimmy. He's on 8 out of 10, best ever. Hell's Wed is saying 8 out of 10, happy with that. Good stuff, Helen. Um, wonder how much uh, Andy helped tonight. I bet it's you that gets it all right, isn't it, Helen? Tabitha Adams, 5 out of 10, very poor by me tonight. Yeah, Tabitha, but it's a pass mark. So it's still a good pass mark. And there were a few banana skins and oddball questions in there, I have to be honest. Our baggy, 8 out of 10. Shane Lays, and in, and he got 9 out of 10 tonight. Um, so many, this is like a who's who tonight. Everybody has been in joining out tonight. Um, any other 10 out of 10s, I want to make sure I try and catch you. Peter Hunt is saying 6 out of 10 <laughs> is the new 10, 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's, a, it's a clear pass. A multi mission is on 9, fantastic. Driver Fish is saying I got 11 out of 10, did I get an extra prize? You get praise. It's an amazing score and you're welcome to your 11 out of 10. You're only keeping your own score, my friend. And Driver Fish, it looks like a new name. It's very nice to have you here. I'm McLaughlin. I was about to blame Jimmy Legg for missing out in the 10 of 10, but I missed that last question up to... We messed it up to... Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> 12 day out of 10, says Lindsay Holman. And Erwin is on a 10 out of 10 as well. Marcus Kreitner is in 10 out of 10. First time, finally. Marcus, Erwin, well done, guys. Fantastic stuff. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, let's see where we're at. Almost, wow, almost at two hours. We're, we'll maybe just keep it under the two hours tonight. There's been a very, very well attended VPUB. I really don't know <laughs> how it's gone down. I don't know what it's going to look like when I look back at it tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to look like when I look back on it in years to come and I look back on the fact that I sat in my driveway, the lights on, throwing bottles into my bin. But it's become a thing, so we just go with it. In the meantime, Per Christensen has bought me a dram saying, have a fantastic vacation with your family, Per. I will, my friend. Thank you so much for your generosity, and thank you for all the time you've been hanging out with us in the last year. Cheers. Wonderful stuff. I'm going to um, keep up to speed with everybody through social media, through Patreon, through the Aquavita Barflies page, through the Water of Life page on Facebook as well, Twitter, Instagram. That's where you'll find me. If you're trying to get a hold of me in the meantime, my email is whiskey at aquavitae.com. I'll do the best to keep up with emails. It's been super, super challenging. There's lots of you out there wondering where your reply is. I will reply to you very, very soon. I have a wee Aquavitae inbox that's getting uh, more and more filled by the day. But sometimes it's genuine, quick, easy answers to very easy inquiries. Um, I'll catch up, I will, with some downtime and less shows to prepare for and things. It should be a wee bit easier. Uh, Malt Minion is saying, have a great holiday. Thank you, Chuck. Everyone is saying, thank you and enjoy your summer break. Thank you, my friend. Simon Reese, thank you, thank you so much. You've kept so many of us sane over the last few months. Have a great and well-deserved break. Tabitha Adams is saying, thanks, Roy. Tonight has been fun, as well as all your streams this year. Thank you and enjoy your holiday. Tabitha and Simon, thank you both so very, very much for all your support and your attendance. Floyd Rodriguez is saying, have a wonderful summer. Floyd, I sent a package to you uh, just over a week or so ago. Should be landing that very soon. Thank you for the community for being such lovely folk. See you all on the flip side in August. That's a wonderful sentiment for me to finish on. Floyd, that's tremendous. Thank you all for being amazing, truly, truly amazing, wonderful, supportive, friendly, uh, knowledgeable, welcoming, amazing, enlightening whiskey folk, barflies patrons, subscribers, viewers, just amazing whiskey folk, honestly. Thank you for making this a very, very special year, a very successful year for the channel. Um, I, 
it's changed the way that, that I view the channel. Right? It's changed what I think it can achieve in the future going forward. I'm planning all sorts of little conspiracies and ideas and things. Uh, hopefully I'll come back after the summer recharged with some upgrades and new ideas uh, like I tend to do. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you guys again uh, after the summer break. But in the meantime, I hope you all enjoy your whiskey, enjoy your summer, enjoy being part of this fantastic whiskey community and i very much look forward to hanging out with you come august thank you you beautiful and dearly dearly loved whiskey folk slanchevar still a bit ugly mm -hmm.